Uh, I know it's a difficult job to be the one having to be the obstacle between you and lunch, especially in the morning where you didn't have any coffee break. So be sure I'm going to try to be brief and crisp. I'd like to elaborate on two things, the facts and the actions. And I speak from the perspective of a large insurance company AXA has been the first insurance brand worldwide over the last six years. From an insurance company which is present in both mature and emerging countries, from an insurance company who has a balance sheet of approximately 800 billion euros and is on top of that managing 600 billion on behalf of third parties. So a lot has been said this morning. Uh, how do we as AXA see the world, where we are very, very much conquering with the remarks which have been made, I think the facts are undeniable. If we think that we will be able to live in a world where temperature would have increased by more than two degrees, we just fool ourselves and we leave a legacy to the next generations, which is not going to be a pleasant one. It's exactly like playing roulette Russian roulette with five bullets in the barrel. For those of you who are not experts, there are six holes in the barrel. So five out of six, you don't need to be an insurer to realize it's a bad risk. So the facts are undeniable. They are not largely, uh, they are not enough shared. So one of our goals as insurers should be to spread the word uh, probably louder than what we have done until now. But let's move to action. How can we act? The way I see it is pretty simple. Uh, I'll take a very simple metaphor, which is a piano. Insurance companies are like pianos. The music they play has to be pleasant, and we have many keys on the piano to play. Some of these keys are the following ones. I mean, we have the asset side of the balance sheet, we have the liability side of the balance sheet, we have the P&L, we have what we do through our economic activity, but we also have what we do throughout our broader corporate social responsibility. We have what we do in mature countries, we have what we do in emerging countries. None of these audiences, none of these tools should be neglected. So. How do we act now? Well, quite simple. I'll take a couple of examples and I'll make a couple of announcements related to the asset side of our balance sheet and I'll come back to the liability side of our balance sheet. On the asset side of our balance sheet, AXA, as of today, commit itself to divest all its remaining coal exposure in its portfolios between now and the end of the year. That's the first point. The second point is we take a commitment to triple the amount of our, quote, green investments between now and 2020 to bring them up to 3 billion euros. The third announcement is we commit to include in all the, uh, I would say, general account portfolios of the group, so hundreds of billions, an ESG approach as part of the investment process till the end of this year. <laughs> the fourth thing is we are joining together with Caisse de Depot the Monreal Pledge, which means that we will disclose our carbon footprint in the portfolios at year end. We think it's important to do that. We understand that, I mean, it's not the solution. Uh, I mean, life is not as simple as that. But we have the feeling that if the large and recognized players create a momentum if they see that as being an important element of their brand attractiveness, it's going to incentivize 
other players to join the effort. So we are happy to do it. We'll make it known, and we see that as one step in what is going to be a longer journey. The second thing is, on the liability side of our balance sheet, we fully understand the fact that what we have to do is pretty broad. We have to increase the risk awareness of our clients. We have to alert them on the risks they are taking. And the largest part of our business, contrary to what most people think, is not to pay claims, is to help our clients not to be faced to these claims because they will have avoided the risk. So spreading the word on the fact that you do not have only immediate risks for the next year or for the next quarter, but you have very long-term risks which can kill your business model if you do not make the appropriate decisions is important. And from that standpoint, I heard uh, a number of pretty interesting suggestions over these last two days, one of them being to ask the question, are you sure that your new investments are compatible with reasonable scenarios or not? Because if they are not, better question these investments and avoid them. We are very conscious of the fact that one key element in this game is going to, to be embarking the emerging countries into the effort. And therefore, we have the feeling that we have to develop, I mean, very specific solutions in this part of the world. And we are very happy, I mean, to have joined forces with some of the uh, institutions which have been represented on the, uh, on the panel here. I mean, with the World Bank on parametric insurance, with LeapFrog on the ability to find new, creative, scalable uh, solutions for the populations which are emerging from poverty. One important element focusing on Africa, which we are announcing today, is also the fact that we are going to join the African risk capacity. And the reason for which we are doing that is pretty simple. When we look at the resilience of societies, of cities, of institutions, of countries, one of the things we realize is that following disasters, many times they have a very significant issue in terms of cash flow. So we think that by joining this African risk capacity, we will help increase the knowledge about prevention, which is going to reduce, I would say, if not the frequency of the disasters, at least their consequences. And second point, we think it will help increase the resilience. So we announce five things today. Is it the end of the journey? Of course not. As insurers, we know that sustainability of societies is the most important thing to achieve long term. And when we look at the world today, it's clear that we see that the threat has never been as high, but that solutions also available have never been that convincing or that large. Uh, the, uh, the panelists have discussed what new technologies can bring. I'm pretty convinced that we are at a turning point. The way the world was at a turning point where electricity was introduced in the manufacturing sector in the second half of the 19th century, so many business models will have to be totally reinvented. And I'm pretty convinced that one of the outcomes is going to be that we will have affordable models for populations which so far were not covered. But there is one point we need to look at with a very, very significant attention. The world has a very significant savings capacity, long-term savings. That's good news. The bad news is the allocation of these savings is a very poor one. Not only because there are too many inequalities in the world, but also because sometimes well-intentioned regulations are creating bad consequences. And as an insurer, one of the things striking me is that what we've been seeing since the financial crisis is a well-intentioned financial regulation creating consequences which are leading to a very, mis very significant misallocation of long-term savings. We would love, like all of our competitors, to invest more in infrastructures, especially in the emerging world. We would love to invest more to finance the development or more of more environment-friendly business models. 
But these investments, they have a risk. Our business model, because we are long-term risk takers, should enable us to take these risks. Because the risk premium, after all, is a necessity if at the end of the day you want to have growth and sustainability. There is a part of the regulation which has taken much too short term an approach. The short sightedness of the regulation is leading to a misallocation of the savings, which is making the issue we have been trying to address this morning more difficult to solve. So if I have a message now to um, voice, it's well, it would be great if we want to increase the leverage we can put in place. If we, if we want to make a better use of the balance sheet of the financial institutions, it would be great to enable them to take more educated risks and risks which would foster a better allocation of the savings and more long-term sustainable investments. If we don't do it, we are just going to compound our issues. This is what I wanted to share with you this morning. At the end of the day, because I am an, uh, I am an entrepreneur, I am optimistic. Yes, we have risks, but we have demonstrated many times in the past that we were able to overcome these risks. And I'm sure that together we'll be able to prove Woody Allen wrong when he says, life is hard and then you die. Thank you.